Good morning on this sunny day and chilly day in Hatfield. Are you guys awake? My wife, being so organized, gave me a whole list of announcements, and everybody keeps asking for more, so you'll get your chance when I'm done with these. Uh, just on a sad note, uh, just to pass along that uh, Ken Seiler's father did pass away on Friday afternoon, so please keep uh, Ken and uh, Karen and their family in your prayers uh, today and this week. Uh, on a happier note... We have a big celebration in the congregation uh, this week or today. Uh, Dale and Mary Jane, today, 50, yesterday, 56 years of marriage. Wedded bliss. Congratulations. Kay and I are trying to catch you, so hopefully uh, we'll do that sometime. So. And as a reminder, the Supathon is next Sunday. Uh, place your order today. If you want soup, and they'll pick it up, they'll have it available next Sunday for you when you, when you come. The order sheets are out there, out in the narthex. And as a reminder, uh, Palm Sunday, and which is March 28th, and Easter Sunday, April 4th, uh, there'll be two services at Grace at 8 and 1030. A little change in the schedule for those two uh, uh, Christian holidays. And Rice Bowl begins today. And uh, there should be a special envelope uh, in, your, in your envelope packet, your regular envelope packet. And uh, so if you'd stuff those full of cash or checks and then uh, replace them in the wooden bowl at the back in front of the uh, cross, that would be great. I'm also to announce that uh, our message today will be given by Pastor Scheller, who's pa pastor at uh, St. John's Phoenixville. And uh, I hope with the bright sunshine you'll be able to see him okay on the wall, but you'll be able to hear him, so for sure. It's, uh, any other announcements? Kevin. I'm going to play on the piano a song that I had scheduled to be sung a couple weeks ago, but we had uh, inclement weather and weren't able to do it. So today, Eagle's Wings is a song that many of you may like and want to sing along. If you want hum along, uh, it's not a song that you clap along, but you can hum along. <laughs> And uh, I will be at the piano. So if you know it and you, you'd like to kind of be a part of it in some special way, go ahead and, and do that with me. Great. Any other announcements? Super. Then we'll turn it over to Kevin for the prelude.
rise. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May be seated. The first reading is from the ninth chapter of Genesis. This reading is the conclusion to the flood story. Because of human sin, God destroys the earth by flood, saving only Noah, his family, and the animals on the ark. Yet divine destruction gives way to divine commitment. As in the first creation, God blesses humanity and establishes a covenant with all creatures. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, Ivan, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal on the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the age of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Peter, the third chapter. The reading is as God acted through Christ's suffering and death to bring us to God. So God acts through baptism to save us from a sinful existence. This spiritual cleansing marks our new life in Christ. Christ all suffered sins for us once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he made and he, he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord.
please rise. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out of the, under the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you seen it? Good morning, children. I'm Pastor Wayne. I know I'm not the pastor you're used to seeing. I'm uh, filling in for Pastor Janet Peterman for a little bit so she could have a Sunday off. So this is where I work. I work at St. John's Lutheran Church in Phoenixville. This is our baptismal font. I am certain that your church has a font too. It probably looks a little different than this one, but I'm sure that it has a font. Um, when we come to the font, we baptize people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and we use water, and when I do it, I like to make a mess. Like I did this morning, we had a baptism. Water all the way across the floor. I'm pretty sure you were baptized at some point. Now, you may not remember it because you were probably a little baby in arms, but mom and dad remember, or grandma remembers, and you ought to ask them when you were baptized. What was that date? And just like you have a birthday, and I'm sure you know what your birthday is, you ought to know what your baptism birthday is. So You ought to tell them to tell you the story. When were you baptized? What day? What month? What year? And write it on the calendar. And here's the sticky part. You should get presents. It's a birthday. You should get presents. Because on that day when you were baptized, God promised you that he would never, ever leave and he would never, ever forget you. And he promised that he would always watch over you and he would always listen to you when you came to talk to him in prayer. So you can never pray when God's not listening. He's always there. So it may look just like plain water in a font like this or whatever yours looks like or even just a bowl but it's a big deal it's a really really big deal and so when we're done ask mom ask dad when was i baptized i want presents hello i'm pastor wayne sheeler and like pastor peterman i am an interim serving here in southeast pennsylvania senate Currently, I'm at St. John's Lutheran Church in Phoenixville, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to, to share with you the good news. Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We do it all the time. We enter into a covenant. Every time we sign a mortgage, buy a car, purchase a stock, rent a carpet cleaner, use a credit card or write a check, borrow something from a neighbor, or make a promise. We enter into a covenant. Now, covenant is kind of a big word for agreement. Usually a formal, solemn, and binding agreement. The people on both sides agree to do certain things. It's a coming together of two parties with clearly defined terms. Such agreements and covenants are all through the scriptures from very on all the way through. In today's text from Genesis, we remember the rainbow, which appeared after the flood, after Noah on the ark with all the animals. It was a covenant between God and every living creature, all flesh that's on the earth. God said, the rainbow is the sign of the covenant that I establish with you between me and all the flesh that's on the earth that never again shall the waters of a flood destroy the earth. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not going to be flooding. 
that there's not going to be hurricanes, that there's not going to be tsunamis, that there won't be changes that happen to our shorelines because of global warming and the rising ocean waters. It means that all animal life, everything that lives and walks on the earth, will never again be eliminated by water. And then in the gospel text this morning from Mark, we see a covenant between God and Jesus. Jesus being baptized in the river Jordan, as he comes up out of the water, the heavens are torn asunder. The Holy Spirit descends like a dove and a voice from a cloud. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And immediately Jesus is driven into the wilderness, tempted by Satan, in order to learn and to clearly understand the covenant of which he is now a part. Understand the relationship that God has just established with him in this place. In that middle lesson in 1 Peter, we hear reference to the covenant between Jesus and me, Jesus and you. Jesus suffered for sins once and for all. For the righteous and for the unrighteous to bring us all to God. Baptism now saves us, not by washing us clean, we all know that we still have sins, but by attaching us, connecting us permanently to Jesus, who is the Lord of all things. We often speak of these covenants as if we initiated them, as if we're the one that set them up, as if we're the predominant person in this equation, as if we're the power at work here. We are not. We have nothing on God. We cannot compel God to do anything. We have no standing and no leverage to make God do what we want. If we do, our God's not big enough. And yet, God, the Almighty One, the Magnificent One, the Unmeasurable One, has for some inexplicable reason chosen to connect with us, chosen to covenant with us, chosen to be accessible to us. What a remarkable gift for which I am severely unworthy and which I am eternally grateful. It is an unbelievably amazing deal that God, the creator of all that is and ever has been, that God, the ultimate unsurpassable authority, chooses to be in a relationship with me and with you and allows us to come into that very presence in prayer and talk any time we want to. There are no busy signals and no need to make an appointment. God tells me over and over and over again that I am loved so that I can know that I am cared for forever. The promise of my baptism. So that from this presence, from this presence of Almighty God, the authority beyond which there are no other authorities, I may have patience and grace and mercy and love to use everything that God has made available to me. My gifts, my skills, my talents, my friends, my money, my house, my resources, everything that God has made available to me care for persons in need, to share with them, share with anyone that will listen, my overwhelmingly generous God. Now that is quite a covenant. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus this day and forevermore. Amen.
When I say, hear us, O God, you respond with, your mercy is great. Relying on promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm comes near in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and acceptance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O God. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community, in our nation, and in the world that they may serve faithfully and remember those who have no power. Hear us, O God. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Strengthen us to tend to those who feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer. Hear us, O God. Even when we cannot see you or when we wander in desert places, you meet us in our hunger and anxieties with your faithful presence, O God. Grant that we may not keep you to ourselves. Hear us, O God. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministry of care and concern. Hear us, O God. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them in the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O God. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Remaining in place, let us acknowledge God's peace with those near us. God bless us that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thank you, God.